Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to continue Beyonce's album cycle with her seventh album, Renaissance. Beyonce's been away for some time now, so when she announced she would release a house project, it came as a shock because that genre of music has slowly been on the rise. In the moment she announced this out of nowhere, a man named Aubrey came in and almost ruined the party when he released his house project to beat out Beyonce's lead off single release. Fortunately, Break My Soul was a better song than Drake's entire house project. Hope the same could be said for hers. North Carolina. I love you. Before we begin, if you want to see music bios or more good videos like this, hit the subscribe button. Also, I've started a Patreon account. On here you get more copyrighted material and they'll be uploaded 48 hours prior to YouTube. If you want to support or visit, link is in the description. And without further ado, on to our feature presentation. The album opener and it's a Beyonce in search of power song and she's been going for this for 25 plus years and has become one of the most powerful celebrities of all time. But in the bridge she says, I never wanted that power. Yeah, sure. And that's what makes the song defeating. Sure the insertion of power is perfect on an album opener, but the results only leave me okay at best. This song is pretty good on production. I bet it went off at LGBTQT clubs. She even shouts them out by naming the colors of their flag. Content here is pretty irrelevant. It's very similar to I'm That Girl. Added with the be comfortable in who you are message. Gay, straight, black, white, Latino, so on and so forth. It's a fine enough song. Don't mind it even if it's not for me. Here's another song I already talked about on this channel and I still stand by calling it one of my least favorite Beyonce songs in general. For one, the tiring interpolation of I'm Too Sexy, one of my least favorite songs in general. Two, it brings back to my problem with Beyonce empowerment songs. It come off as uplifting herself and not her audience. It's a Beyonce flexing song that I do not like. Pass, even if it's a fan favorite. Cuff It starts off the really good run on this album. And I remember talking about this song on my best of 2022 countdown and my opinions pretty much stayed the same two years later. And I love the Nas Rogers, Raphael Sadiq production and it carries much of the heavy load. But it's still a quality fun bouncy disco jam. I love it. Go back and re-listen to it. This was the lead off single for the album and I remember not caring for it as much and I still don't. It's not a bad song, but it rides on the Robin S sample and Beyonce isn't as engaged as I wanted her to be. But I will say this, she released this the week Drake dropped his surprise house project to beat out Beyonce and her one song was better than Drake's entire project. It's not a bad song, it goes off with the LGBTQT community. Might go well for them, I'll give them that. I just wish I liked it more. I still don't know how Beyonce took a Clark sister sample and make it a dance club twerk song. And she states not only the bad girls like to have fun, but she also insists that the church girl to let loose without judgment. And Beyonce sounds like she's having fun and that's a plus for me. So you know what? I don't mind this at all. On my first listen two years ago, this was my runaway favorite song on the album. And while I think the song is still good, it kind of cooled on me for a bit. But why did this work for me was because it was the old school traditional R&B production. Next, it feels nostalgic as it sounded like it could have been on her debut album, which was filled with those R&B songs. And not to mention Beyonce had a really good vocal performance. So yeah, two years later, I still like it if not love it. It's a really good song. I remember listening to this song back when the album came out and I was only lukewarm on it. And I was disappointed because I'm a Virgo and it didn't click for me at the time. But re-listening to this, it got better with age and this is another old school Beyonce love song. Wanting her lover to come over and like with Church Girl, Beyonce's having fun because we Virgos do it better. Didn't care for it then, but times has changed. 
I could co-sign this as a Virgo. And this sadly ends the great run of songs, but this isn't bad by any means. It's an Afrobeat jam filled with women empowerment messages telling everyone to move out the way because the ladies, they're taking over, which is true. Now, in the beginning of her verse, it sounds like she's interpolating Press by Cardi B. And Tim's is here where her vocals distorted and she's just here to hype up Beyonce and the ladies. And because it's a ladies jam, it's a song that's not for me, but I respect it. Heated is nothing more than a dance hall jam and it's built for the LGBTQT audience. Again, not for me. But I will say that the ending of the song is one of her best vocal moments on the album. Her outro verse does come off a bit as rambling and that's where she loses me a bit. As is, the song has good moments of excellence, but again, comes off as not for me. Beyonce is appreciative of her body and how she interpolates this is interesting. While she's talking about her body is changing, it's in comparison to how much money and wealth she's acclaimed with as she's gaining age. I don't have anything else to say outside of the production being something. It's decent. And this is Beyonce experimenting with hyperpop. And I didn't understand it at first because when I first heard the production here, I was turned off. And that was until multiple re-listens to half my respect. And it's Beyonce living up to the song's title for this guy. She knows he really wants her. But content aside, production was a bit of a setback for me. And it's probably me not understanding hyperpop, but I do appreciate the effort here. And it leaves me standing in the middle. The song I thought was gonna be politically charged, and it's not to an extent. Beyonce verse, she uses her body to compare people with cocaine addictions. It is addicting. Months later, Kendrick will drop a hip hop remix, which he says he's puzzling like Sudoku, calls out AI for cloning him, but he shouts out the Beehive as an honorary member. Due to the undertones, you don't think that this is politically a charge, but shout out to Bay and Kendrick for the experiment. Beyonce does something that she hadn't done since her self-titled album, and that's make a two-part song. Part one is nothing more than a dance club song for all the pretty boys, and has the line, it costs a billion to look good. It only cost me $10 to look good. Part two is Honey, where she goes full disco, where Beyonce goes in full sex mode, as she is so sweet, it makes sense that she's the queen bee and bees make honey. Part two was fun, which had me wanting more and not to shame part one, but again, pure is not for me. So I'll take honey, but only leave pure because reasons are already stated. The album Closer, and this is a song where if you've been to the Renaissance tour, it goes better off live. It's another dance song with minimalistic content, although Beyonce does flex about her fashion choices in the end. But since I did participate in the Renaissance experience back in August of last year, it's a closer that I don't mind not one bit. Now we do have a bonus song that I want to talk about because she released this in promotion with the Renaissance movie. And I understand why this song was left off the album because I'm not sure where she would place it. It's a two-part marching band percussion heavy flex where we get rapping angry Beyonce and flexing on the haters. Beyonce telling listeners to get out my house. But I'm not sure who she's addressing here. Again, I'm assuming it's the haters. But part two goes full house where Beyonce is pretty repetitive. And normally I like angry Beyonce, but I had an awful experience listening to this song. No wonder I forgot about it. And that concludes this album review. I said it before and I'll say it again. This album is not for me. I appreciate a lot of the experiments done here, but there are a lot of things that did not click for me. And maybe it's because I don't understand house music. So for a ranking, I'm giving it a safe 7 out of 10 ranking. Good moments, but at the same time, I really wanted to love this album. Now for our next album, Beyonce exchanged her house music for Cowboys hats, Cowboy boots, and Levi jeans. And that concludes the Renaissance review. Tell me what you think in the comments below. What are some of your favorite songs from this album? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.